In this lesson, we will factor trinomials that have a lead coefficient greater than 1. So what does that mean? This trinomial 3x squared minus 23x minus 8 has a lead coefficient greater than 1. 3 is the lead coefficient. Coefficient is just strictly a number that's multiplied by a variable. So here we have 3 as our leading number, and it's the coefficient of the x squared term. Whenever this number is greater than 1, it can be very time consuming and more difficult to factor. So I'm going to show you a method that I think is a pretty quick and easy way to factor these types of trinomials. There are several different methods. One method is the guess and check method. This method can be very time consuming and frustrating. And the other method is the grouping method. And the grouping method is what I'm going to show you today. When we use the grouping method, we have to first set up the problem. This problem, the way that it's set now as a trinomial, is not set up to factor by grouping. If you remember from our factoring by grouping lesson, we need to really have at least four terms that we can group in pairs in order to factor. So we need to set this up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply the lead coefficient by the constant. And we're going to refer to this number as the product. And again, we're just setting this problem up so that we can easily factor it by grouping. So the lead coefficient here is 3, and the constant is negative 8. So what this means is we're going to multiply 3, which is the lead coefficient, times negative 8, and we're going to find that our product is negative 24. So we're going to refer to this number as the product. It's negative 24. Okay, these are just some preliminary steps. Step number two is to identify the linear term or the middle term. We're going to refer to this number as the sum. So the linear term, if you remember when we worked with linear equations, a linear term just has a variable to the first degree. So here the linear term is negative 23 and or negative 23x but the sum that we're going to be looking for is negative 23. So step two is just identifying this middle term and what we're doing here is we're looking for two magic numbers and these two magic numbers are going to have a product of negative 24 and a sum of negative 23. So now we need to identify these magic numbers. And again, they must have a product of negative 24 and a sum of negative 23. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to focus on the products. I'm going to list all the numbers that have a product of 24. So a product of 24 could be 12 and 2. It could be 3 and 8. It could be 6 and 4. It could also be 24 and 1. So these are the factors of 24. Now my two numbers have to multiply to equal negative 24. That means that one of these numbers has to be negative and one has to be positive. I also know that they need to add up to be negative 23. That kind of tells me that my larger number needs to be negative because the sum is negative. And when I subtract the numbers, I'm going to get a difference of 23, but that larger number, we have to take the sign of the largest absolute value. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my largest numbers here negative. So now I want to find out which of these sets has a sum of negative 23. And it says sum, but when one's negative and one's positive, we have to subtract those numbers because that is what's required by our integer rules. So negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. That's not going to work because we need a sum of negative 23. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And negative 24 plus 1 is negative 23. That meets the requirement of the sum. So negative 24 and 1 are our two magic numbers 
because when I multiply negative 24 times 1, I get negative 24. And when I add negative 24 plus 1, I get negative 23. So these two numbers meet the requirements for both of these um, rules. So I've identified two magic numbers, negative 24 and 1. Now watch carefully what we do with these two magic numbers. We are going to rewrite this trinomial with four terms. So I'm going to replace the middle term with these two numbers. So all that means is I'm going to take, and I'm going to rewrite the first term as it is, 3x squared. But now, instead of writing minus 23x, I'm going to replace it with the sum of these two numbers. So minus 24x plus 1x, which I don't need the 1, or I can write it there if I choose to, it doesn't matter, minus 8. So notice that the first term stayed the same, the second term stayed the same. What changed is the middle term. The middle term I've simply written as a sum of negative 24x plus 1x. And ask yourself, what is negative 24x plus 1x? It's really negative 23x. So have I changed the value of this trinomial? No. I've just rewritten it in a different way. It's still the same um, expression. It's just written with four terms instead of three terms. So now that I have this expression written as four terms, I can go ahead and factor by grouping. So if you recall from that lesson, to factor by grouping, we're going to take our polynomial here and we're going to separate it into two groups. So I'm going to take the first two, 3x squared minus 24x, and I'm going to divide it and I'm going to make the second two terms their own two terms here. So 1x minus 8. So I'm just taking this polynomial and kind of dividing it into two sections. And now I'm going to factor each section separately. So 3x squared minus 24x, I tell myself that I can factor out a 3 and an x. And when I do that, I'm left with 1x, because 3x times x is 3x squared, minus 8, because 3x times negative 8 is negative 24x. Now for my blue section, I don't really have a greatest common factor for 1 and negative 8, and when that happens, you just want to factor out a 1. And so you're going to be left with x minus 8. Now notice that we have 3x times x minus 8, 1 times x minus 8. I actually have, and there's a plus here, I actually have two um, factors that are the same. I have x minus 8 in this set and x minus 8 in this set. Therefore, I can factor out x minus 8 as a common factor. And then I ask myself, when I factor out x minus 8, what am I left with here? I'm left with 3x. And what am I left with here? I'm left with plus 1. So I end up with x minus 8 times 3x plus 1. I like to write it with the lead coefficient that's greater first. So 3x plus 1 times x minus 8. And these are the two factors for our original trinomial of 3x squared minus 23x minus 8. And if you choose to, you can check this. And I always recommend checking because that helps you to know whether or not you factored it correctly. In order to check, you just simply FOIL. So we're checking 3x plus 1 times x minus 8, and we're going to FOIL. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 8 is negative 24x. 1 times x is x, 
and 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. The really cool thing is, when you look at this expression right here, it's exactly what we came up with right here. So we know that when we combine these like terms, we're going to end up with negative 24 plus 1 is negative 23x, which is our original trinomial. And if you end up with your original trinomial, you know that your factors are correct. Okay, so again, this is just another method for factoring any trinomial that has a lead coefficient greater than 1. And this is a quick and easy way so that you don't have to guess and check a million times in order to figure out those um, factors. Okay.